On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Kurt Straits remain open. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to this episode. So the recent attack on the Kurt Strait Bridge, this is the bridge that goes across the straits that connect together Crimea to the Russian mainland. Crimea is a peninsula juts out of Ukraine, was seized by Russia in 2014. It was physically separated from Russia, so they built this bridge across the Kerch Strait. And the bridge is absolutely essential for getting goods and equipment across between Crimea and Russia. Not as much now with the overland passage opened up because of the Russian offensive. However, the bridge goes across this main shipping channel. The Kerch Strait connects Russia with the outside world. All the water transportation off the Don, the Volga rivers, the Caspian Sea come out through the Sea of Azov under the Kerch Strait Bridge to vessels. And then there's a ship to ship transfer of cargo into larger vessels. And those larger vessels head out of the Black Sea to deliver food, fuel and fertilizer from Russia to other nations. Well, the recent attack on the Kerch Strait Bridge had the potential to close that vital waterway. And what I want to talk about today is the importance of this and the maritime dimension that we continue to see developing here in this Russia-Ukraine conflict. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we do so, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into it. So this video from The Guardian uh, shows you what was happening on the bridge just prior and during the explosion. So what you're looking at here to orient yourself is you're looking northward from Russia toward the Crimean Peninsula. The bridge on the left is the railway bridge. It's elevated up so you can't see it, but there's a, a train that's coming across right now on it. That bridge is on the west side. The eastern side bridge you see right here is the roadside bridge, twin lanes on each side. And the truck in question is about to head up on the, uh, uh, kind of head up here on the bridge toward the ramp. You'll see it up here right along a car. So you'll see it right here in this area heading up and then you'll see the explosion that engulfs it. And there's a lot of debate about this explosion. Some say it came from below the bridge in a boat. Others say it was a truck on board. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about this explosion and, and a lot of analysis of it. Uh, it looks to me, and again, I'm not an expert by any means, that the uh, blast happened above the bridge, not below it. But again, not an expert. This is another image of the bridge. This, this one is taken from, uh, the south, uh, from the north side of the bridge on the Crimea side. Looking toward Russia side, you can see the fire that's caused on the railway cars here, and it gives you an image. The large areas right here, these big, huge kind of crescents right here, this is the center span. This is the main shipping channel goes underneath here. And that was the area that I think is of significant importance. Had that area been dropped, it could have conceivably have closed the shipping channel. Let's come over here to one of our favorite sites, Marine Traffic. Uh, Marine Traffic it tracks all commercial vessels as they move through their AIS transponders. On the left here, this is the Gulf of Odessa that we're seeing right here. So right here, this is the Gulf of Odessa. You can see it pretty empty right now. There's a line of ships just coming out. This is the... Uh, Ukrainian ships that were allowed to load grain through the UN agreement. So you have a, usually a pack of those vessels will load and come out in groups. But meanwhile, over here in the Sea of Azov, you're seeing a, almost a continual line of vessels going in and out. This is the Kerch Strait. This is the separation between uh, mainland Russia here on the right, on the, uh, on the eastern side, and Crimea on the west. You can see this huge, massive anchorage down here just below. This is the Kerch Bridge right here where the attack took place. This kind of yellow line right here. This is where the bridge uh, attack took place. Actually, it took place right around here. And then what you see here is vessels that are proceeding through underneath the span, heading back up. These are vessels that are smaller vessels. So if you, you click on them, they're very small kind of river barge uh, type vessels. They'll load cargo in the interior of Russia, sail across the Sea of Azov, come out here, and then head toward these large groupings of vessels that you see right here and transload cargo to them. And that's why if, if the Kerch Strait had collapsed, if that bridge had collapsed across the center span, 
all these vessels on the north side would have been cut off and not able to transfer cargo to the vessels on the south side. And that would have caused a lot of problems for Russia and would have conceivably led to, I don't know what, how Russia reacts to this. Because one of the main objectives Russia has had during this war is to open up this passage and ensure the free flow of its cargo in and out of Russia. This is why they've allowed Ukraine to allow vessels to come out of Ukraine with grain and cargo because they want unfettered control of their own ships coming in and out. It's an essential part of the Russian economy. So look at some of the news stories that focused on this attack and the impact it had on shipping. This is one from Sam Chambers over at Splash 24-7. Sam talks about the fact that the 19-kilometer bridge, the longest in Europe, straddles the Kerch Strait, which links the Sea of Azov with the Black Sea. Typically around 15 to 16 ships, mainly tankers followed by bulkers, enter the strait either from the south or north on a daily basis. On October 7th, when the attack took place, 19 ships entered the straits according to data from the shipping platform C. The following day, when the bridge was attacked, five ships pass by and then there were no vessels passing through the waterway since according to sea with other vessels traffic sites showing congestion growing at the ports in the sea of azov this story here by uh, bridget dacum over at lloyd's list goes a little bit further here where she talks about the temporary pause over the weekend following the attack she goes on here according to lloyd's list intelligence vessel tracking data northbound traffic resumed later that day with the transit of the russian flag general cargo ship vladimir very ironically named vessel southbound movement began shortly after a total of 52 vessels passed under the kirch bridge on october 9th suggesting that normal traffic volumes have been quickly resumed and again this is an essential point if you cut this bridge all of a sudden, all this goods that are coming out of Russia will not be able to get out of Russia. And again, this is why Russia has focused so much on the seizure of Mariupol, on the capture of Berdansk, and really neutralizing the Ukraine control of the waterway. And now, with the seizure of Crimea, with the grabbing of the land bridge between those two, Russian ships can basically move without a problem. However, had the Kerch Strait Bridge been dropped... That could have interdicted it. Uh, we also see this story here, which is coming up, about the grain coming out of Ukraine. This story by Reuters. UK, Ukraine grain backlog prompts call for faster ship inspections. There is a holdup in the movement of ships up into Ukraine to get grain out. With nearly 100 grain-laden ships reaching toward the horizon off Istanbul, the UN officials overseeing exports from Ukraine is asking Russia and other parties to, uh, to end full-blown inspections. You see right here in the story, on Monday, 97 outgoing ships carrying 2.1 million tons of cargo were awaiting inspections, with one held up for 35 days, a Reuters analysis found. Including those returning empty to Ukraine, the JCC said the backlog was 120 last week. It goes on down here in the story to say... The delays worsened from mid-September, with wait times for inspections doubling to about 10 days by September 21st. Remember, Russia will not allow ships to sail to Ukraine unless they're inspected to be empty to make sure there's not weapon shipments heading up there. Uh, it goes on here, the Ukrainian Ag agricultural minister Mykola Soleski told Reuters last week that uh, officials in Istanbul have not adequately explained why inspections have slowed in the last two weeks. And what this means is less grain is coming through. This story also by Bridget over at Lloyd's builds on that story. The grain corridor requires 25 daily inspections to solve ship backlog. And what we're seeing right here now is just delays. And there's no telling how much those delays may actually increase with this attack on the Kerch Strait Bridge. If Russia feels like its trade is going to be jeopardized, they may be willing to jeopardize Ukrainian shipments of grain in reply. Again, we're seeing a unique maritime dimension to this conflict. You add to this the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines. All of this is turning a regional conflict in Russia-Ukraine into a much larger conflict on the global stage with the Black Sea, the Baltic Sea, and world trade all hanging in the balance. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. 
Take a moment, share it across social media, leave a comment. And if you can, if you can support the page, how do you do that? Well, you can hit that super thanks button below where you can contribute directly to the page or hit the Patreon link at the end of the video or down in the show notes and become a patron of the page. That allows me to put this videos together for you. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.